Namaste. I am Dr. Janvi Bhate from the Department of Ear, Nose, Throat Surgery, Amrita Hospitals, Kochi. Today, let's speak about a health issue that is so prevalent in society that either you, a family member, or at least someone you've known would, would be experiencing it at some point in their life. I'm speaking about none other than nasal allergy and the involvement of sinuses. Nasal allergy, or what is otherwise known as allergic rhinitis medically, is basically an allergic reaction of the mucosal lining of the nose and the paranasal sinuses to any irritable substances in the environment. Nasal allergy can manifest as a manifold of symptoms, which could include recurrent bouts of sneezing, nasal block, which is usually an alternating nasal block, seasonal nasal allergic symptoms, which usually occur during rainy season or cold season, watery nasal discharge and itching from the nose, itching over the nose, itching also in the oral cavity and also sometimes involving the ears. The triggers of nasal allergy include exposure to dust, mites, pollen grains, air conditioned air, sometimes even cold air that is natural cold air and places that might have a lot of uh, dust in the like for example construction or your workplace if it has a lot of dust at home if you look at the curtains the bed sheets places with a lot of velvet on their sofa carpets these are places that usually end up lodging a lot of dust and if not cleaned regularly they can be significant triggers for worsening of nasal allergy. The main thing to understand about nasal allergy is the fact that allergic rhinitis can only be controlled. It can never be cured completely. It's not like a swelling on the body that can be cut and kept away. Rather, it is something that can be controlled with minimizing the exposure to the triggers as well as with medications. The triggers basically, as we already discussed, the first and foremost would be reducing exposure to dust. Hence, clean your house regularly, clean your workplace regularly and try to expose and try to minimize the exposure to dust. The next thing would be try to reduce exposure to air conditioned air. Of course, to natural cold air exposure might not be able to be reduced that significantly, but that is also to be considered when there is extreme climatic changes. The next would be that it is good to wear masks for those with significant nasal allergy, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. It has been noted that universally it is reported most patients have done better with the use of masks. Although for some people, masks can cause significant irritation and also cause itching and watery nasal discharge. But mostly mask has improved the incidence of allergic rhinitis and caused reduction in symptoms. So, as far as possible, wear masks, it will help you for the allergy as well as to prevent COVID-19 infection. The next would be to help uh, to reduce the exposure to mites. So, make sure that you use pest control in your house regularly and re reduce the exposure for mites for yourself and your children by regular cleaning of the house. Now, if it happens that allergic rhinitis progresses further, in spite of trying to control with medical management, then it goes on to what is called as allergic rhinosinusitis, that is, involvement of the paranasal sinuses. In that case, the patient needs to be evaluated in the outpatient department with different blood tests as well as endoscopy and if necessary, a multidimensional CT scan of the paranasal sinuses also. A word of caution for those patients who have diabetes or may be immunocompromised with diseases like cancer or HIV or hepatitis or any other autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease basically means diseases where the body is working against itself. These patients need to be aware, especially in the background of a possible COVID-19 infection that they might have had over the past few months. If you have headache after the COVID-19 infection, which is persisting 
after medications also, I would advise a word of caution and get and advise you to get investigated in the ENT department as soon as possible. Because the fact remains that these patients are prone to a type of fungal rhinosinusitis, which sometimes can be a deadly fungal infection too. Hence, early detection and treatment is the key for these patients. Even in this age and time, we have patients who come and tell us that we have been using antihistamine tablets like cetrazine, desloratadine for many months to years. Now that is not necessary. Rather than that, you can improve your quality of life by using long-term nasal sprays for few months. Some might require it for even few years. But most patients are able to live comfortably using steroid nasal sprays. Although it is a steroid nasal spray, do not hold a stigma to the steroid word in it. It's because the, con the amount of absorption through the nasal mucosa is very minimal and it does not have side effects like oral steroid tablets. So, the take home message is that if you have nasal allergy, come get treated, improve the quality of your life, reduce the exposure to triggers, use nasal spray regularly and if needed, even do a saline nasal rinse regularly. Thank you.